All right, cool. Um, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. Um, so as you know, Pod secured. Pod is the smallest unit in uh, Kubernetes for execution, and uh, the pod security would probably be the most the first thing you want to address during your deployment. So today we're going to be talking about um, the pod security and how to use Kubernetes to manage the pod security. Oops. Um, I guess we're in the run um, slides. All right, just a quick introduction of myself. My name is Shuding Zhao. I'm a Kubernetes maintainer, and I've been contributing to Kubernetes policy work group as well as multi-tenancy work group, and I'm currently working at Namada. All right, so pod security. It is important, right? And a Kubernetes has um, introduced this pod security standards to help you um, configure the security context of your pod manifest. And the pod security standards has been um, defined in three, into di three different levels. The first one is the privilege level, which contains the most unrestricted policy. It provides the widest possible level of permissions. And then they have this baseline or default policy, which are minimally restrictive policy while preventing non-privilege escalations. And we also have this most restricted policies following the current pot hardening best practices. So what are the current like existing solutions provided in Kubernetes? What are the built-in solutions? As of now in Kubernetes, they have introduced the pot security admission um, in Kubernetes 1.2. And it is offered as a built-in uh, as a built-in pod security admission controller, and it's currently supported in alpha feature. And the other built-in solution is the pod security policies. As you know, it was running in beta for a long time, and it has been deprecated in Kubernetes 122, and I believe it'll be removed in Kubernetes 125. So there are a lot of blog posts, discussions around PSP and uh, why it's been deprecated. If you're interested in learning more about that, I have at attached a few links here for you to visit later. So now, let's take a close look at pod security admission, right? The PSA is good. It is a built-in uh, Kubernetes validating admission controller. And um, it, it also, it'll also help you to migrate from your existing pod security policies. But there are always trade-offs, right? Since it's been currently supported in alpha feature, enabling the, any alpha feature in Kubernetes would require the access to the API server, which is not provided or available in most of the managed Kubernetes services, like um, AKE, EKS, or JKE. And the PSA can be enabled in three different modes, like the audit, audit, warn, and enforce. And if you have the PSA configured in audit mode, the reporting ability is really limited to audit logs. And in order to enable that, you have to configure the audit policy um, via the Kube API server, which again requires the access to the Kubernetes control plane component. And if you have the PSA enabled in the enforce mode, the enforcement is really at the pod level, not at pod controller level. Let's, let's say um, if someone is trying to create a deployment in the Kubernetes cluster, then um, the creation of that deployment will actually be allowed, but the pod will not be scheduled into your cluster. And it may take a few extra steps for developers to troubleshoot why the pod isn't being scheduled and why, like, um, yeah, that, that's kind of thing. And um, if, if all these three different modes are enabled at namespace level, which means there is no support for fine-grained privilege. Um, for example, there is no exception that you can make to allow a pod to be scheduled into that namespace if you have PSA configured at that particular namespace. And uh, since the PSA runs the validating webhook controller, um, there is no ability to mutate the default values to set the security context of your workload and the pod. 
All right, PSA is good. It is encouraged to start with the PSA for secure defaults, right? And it is also recommended to use a policy engine like Kiverno for fine-grained security configurations and the enforcement of the additional workload and configuration security. For the centralized reporting, the enforcing best practices, and the automation of defaults. So why use Kiverno? There are plenty, a lot of policy engines out there. Why you would choose Kiverno? To answer that question, we have to first understand the goals of Kiverno project, what it currently offers, right? So Kiverno is a Kubernetes native policy engine, which makes the Kubernetes policy easy to write and manage. And it makes policy results easy to process. In Kiverno, we support the validate policy in audit and enforce mode. We have the mutate policy to add the default values for your pod security context. And then we have this generate policy for you to generate any uh, like default resources upon triggers. Kiverno supports all different types of Kubernetes resources, including customer resource and it used Kubernetes patterns and pra practices. With all those being supported in Kiverno and by being Kubernetes native policy engine, Kiverno really simpl simplifies the Kubernetes policy management in this case. All right, if you look at a Kiverno policy, within a policy, um, you can define one or multiple Kiverno rules and within different uh, within each rule, you can have this match and exclude block defined to select the target resource based on the labels, namespaces, namespace selectors, and the user infos, even the, the pod images, or um, any attributes inside the pod. And um, with the pod in the body of the Kiverno policy, you can specify any of these four patterns to mutate, validate, generate resources, as well as verify images that are used in your workload and pod. Kiverno by default provides this um, a simple policy library, which covers the post security standards from baseline to restrict level, right? So if you look at this screenshot, it is a Kiverno validate policy which helps you enforce the security contacts of your pod must have run as non-root set to true, both in the pod level, containers level, as well as inside the init containers, right? And this PSS policy can be easily installed into your Kubernetes cluster using a single line command um, with customize and kubectl. So next, I'm gonna jump directly to the demo to show you how to install those PSS policies. All right, so let's look, uh, to look at the command first. It is a customized command, and it pulls from the uh, remote GitHub repo, and then will be apply all the resource manifest using kubectl apply, and the policies will be installed, right? So let me quickly switch to my terminal. And I hope the font size looks good. I can make it larger real quick. All right, so before we do that, I'm gonna uh, show you the setup for today. I have a simple Docker desktop cluster running. If I do kubectl get pod, sorry, get node, there is a single node cluster running there. And I have already have Kiverno running my cluster. If you haven't installed that, it can be easily done by a single kubectl command, or you can use a uh, ham chart to install Kiverno. And then uh, with all the setup being done uh, in your cluster, let's do the command, right? Let's do customize, build, and let's pull from the GitHub repo. Okay, I'm not gonna, all right, there, here is the, uh, the command. So if I, once I run that, It'll pull from the uh, Kiverno sample library repo, and you can see a bunch of cluster policies has been created in the, uh, into the Kubernetes cluster. So since Kiverno uh, policy is just a Kubernetes CRD, 
So you can easily get it using the kubectl get cluster policy. And then you'll see all the policies uh, are installed and it's currently in ready state, right? So let's go, let me go back to the slides and um, let's talk about how we can use those PSS policies to manage the, the pod security contacts, right? Um, so with Kiverno validation policy, uh, it can be configured in enforce or audit mode. When you have the valid, valid policy running in enforce mode, which means the violations will cause the resource to be rejected. And you can also configure the valid policy in audit mode, which is kind of a soft limit policy. That means when you have any policy violation, the violations will be logged into the policy reports and recorded in the events. But otherwise, the resource creation would be allowed. An awesome thing that is supported by Kiverno is this auto-gen ability. Um, Kiverno automatically generates the policy rules for pod controllers when you have any rules written on pod, right? Which means um, you, can, you can simply define a, a single rule written on pod, and Kiverno would understand that and convert all the pod's rules to cover the pod controllers. And this feature is enabled by default and can be configured with this annotation to match a particular pod controller or even turn it off. Right, so then the next demo I'm gonna show you today is how Kiverno Enforce Policy works in a live cluster. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a workload uh, resource deployment, and then um, with all those PSS policies installed, I would expect Kiverno reject the resource creation, reject the deployment creation for me. Okay, so before we do that, let's inspect one of the cluster policy. Let's say Hukuro get cluster policy, and then let's look at this require run as non rule. All right, actually, before I do that, um, this is the sample policy available from the uh, GitHub repo. You can see that I have a Kiverno validate rule which matches to the pod. And then there I'm going to validate the security contacts. Run as non root has to be set to true, right? So if we ins install that in the, into the Kubernetes cluster and then inspect the policy. Oops. Uh, oops. Oh, let me just grab the manifest. So you will see there are three rules in total. Remember, in, in this, in this uh, static manifest, I only have a single rule available, right? But if you install that, Kiverno would uh, convert the pod rules to cover the pod controller. So that you can see there are additional rules being generated. This one is match, matches the cron job. And we also have another one, uh, another rule match the deployment, daemon set, jobs, stay for set, all those controller, pod controllers, right? So let's go ahead and create the workload, create, create the uh, deployment in this case. Let's do kubectl, create deployment, demo nginx, dash dash image. I'm gonna use the nginx image. And uh, with this command, you can see I, I have no security contacts. And especially with that run as non root tag, I don't have it set in my uh, deployment. So if I run that command, you would say, um, okay, so my resource creation is rejected by Kiverno, validating by hook. And you can see these are the policies that are actually rejecting the resource creation. Right, this is good. So the, the, it don't, um, the developers don't need to troubleshoot or find any traces of like why the pod isn't being scheduled to the cluster and so on. All right, so this is how Kiverno val enforce policy works uh, in the cluster, uh, helps you enforce the pod controllers. And then what if you, uh, what about your existing resources that are already deployed in your cluster, right? With Kiverno policies, we can also scan all your existing resources and uh, audit all the policy results in the policy report. By the way, uh, Kiverno uses the policy report CRD, which is provided from uh, Kubernetes policy workgroup, 
and you can use uh, Kiverno to generate either in-cluster policy report, or if you don't want to install Kiverno into your cluster, you can also get the reports from Kiverno CLI. And I've attached a few attributes inside the policy result um, attribute, and you can see we have the policy names name available here. We have the uh, resource information, we have the uh, rules and the final result being recorded in, in the uh, policy report. So let's go back to the cl cluster. Before I install all the policies, I have a single pod running in my cluster. It's just a Nginx pod, right? So since, again, policy report is another CRD, we can get the policy report using this Kubekoto, get policy report, and then you can see the summarize of the report. So this is the report generated for a default namespace, and there are 34 rules passed and two failures. Right? So let's inspect the policy report and see what are the exact failure there. So let's do kubectl describe polr. By the way, polr is just the short name of policy report, and you give it a name, grab on the failed status. If I do that, you will say there, uh, there are two violations on pod nginx inside the default namespace, and here is the policy that the resource is violating. Right here, um, again, this is another policy that is enforcing the, the, the pod configuration. All right, with, with the kubectl command, you can, get the, you can view the policy report, right? But we also, we also provide uh, this policy reporter as another tool, which helps you uh, view the policy results generated from either Kiverno, Falco, Kubebench, or Trivi. And the policy reporter can also be configured to send the no notifications to uh, different targets like Loki, Elasticsearch, Teams, Discord, Slack, and so on. Here is just a, a UI of the policy reporter, which uh, gives you the centralized view of all the policy violations. All right, we also have this Grafana dashboard uh, provided here. If you configure that in your cluster, you will see the score of your cluster. Currently, um, you can see that this cluster got a 100 score here since there's no violation, but if there's any, it will be reported in this Grafana dashboard. All right, we've, so far we've seen how Kiverno enforce your incoming uh, admission request, how Kiverno would uh, generate the reports against your existing resource. But how do we remedy the policy violation? Right? Um, the, most sim the simplest way to do that is just to modify the pod manifest and uh, to let it comply with the policy. You're gonna, uh, you install and configure it in the, in the cluster. But think of um, if you have hundreds of applications um, you want to manage as a cluster admin, it is not an easy job to do, right? So Kiverno, we provide this um, mutate policy, which helps you to set the default um, security contacts or any other values inside the pod configuration or any other like uh, Kubernetes resource, uh, resource manifest in a flexi flexible manner. So you can uh, choose the resource based on the labels, the select selectors, and the annotations, um, any attributes inside the, uh, inside the resource manifest, and to inject the default values, right? Um, on this example uh, policy, it's just a mutated policy which um, would operate on the resource type pod. And I'm, I'm saying that I want to inject the security context privilege to set to false. Okay, so let's go back to the cluster and see how the Kiverno policy uh, injects the defaults. By the way, the autogen is also supported in mutate policy, which means if I have my rule defined on pod, the Kiverno would convert that and uh, mutate the default values to pod controllers. All right, uh, before we do that, let's look at the policy again. Here um, I have a, sim simple, a single rule uh, which applied to Kubernetes pod, and I want to set the security context privilege to false. And what I'm going to do next is to create a deployment, which is a workload in Kubernetes, right? So I would expect after the, um, the 
mutate policies being applied to the deployment. Um, the, it should have has this privilege, security context set to false. Right, let me put up the terminal and install the uh, mutate policy. Do cookcuttle create the chef mutate privileged. All right, before I create the deployment, let's look at the policy again. Um, since I installed all the PSS policies in enforce mode, it'll you know um, block the resource creation. So in this case, I'm gonna first patch all the uh, validation failure action to audit to let my resource creation path through. So let's do customize build dash, dash kernel policies. I believe that's enough. Kubernetes apply dash f dash. Oops. Uh, where am I? No objects. That's interesting. Customize pod security. Let's added this command. Governal policies, pod security. All right. So let's 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 get the cluster policy again and see all the yeah all the failure action is now patched to uh, audit. So um, which means my deployment creation would be allowed. Right, then let's go ahead and do Kukato create deployment. Let's say nginx, image nginx latest. And once my deployment is created, let's do Kukato get deployment nginx and grab on the container object. You can see that the security context has been set uh, a privilege has been set to false successfully. This is um, how Kubernetes mutate policy injects the defaults against your incoming admission request. All right, so we've been talked about how to manage the pod security, how to automate the defaults using Kubernetes policies, but there is more beyond pod security. It's not just the security for pod configuration. Other configurations also need to be secured, right? Some of the examples today, um, for example, the workload identity. So you would um, want to guarantee that the single service account can only schedule the same application once into your cluster. And for the fine-grained RBAC, the service configurations, and um, there is, one vulnerability issue has been discovered in Kubernetes is that um, the Kubernetes API server uh, allows the attacker who has the ability to create the cluster, type, cluster IP type of service and set the spec.cluster IP field to intercept the traffic to that particular IP address. Right. Similarly, you would also want to secure the ingress configuration in a similar manner. The images that are used in your application in your pod also need to be verified for signatures and attestations to prevent supply chain attacks. And uh, the best practice configurations should always be standardized in your Kubernetes cluster. All right, to summarize it, a few takeaways from today's session, right? So it's good to start with the built-in security configurations like PSA in Kubernetes. And you will also need a policy engine for additional checks, configurations, and automation. And there, Kubernetes provides a Kubernetes native experience to help you enforce best practices on pod as well as other configurations. Okay, if you like Kiverno, if you're interested in any of the features we've discussed today, uh, or if you have any further uh, like discussions you wanna continue with us, please feel free to visit us at Kiverno booth. And uh, you're welcome to join our office hour, which is scheduled on this Thursday, 4.30 p.m. And if you're online audience, um, feel free to join the Kiverno community. We have the documentation, all the sample policies for today available 
from Kiverno official website. We're also maintaining the Kiverno Slack channels under both uh, Kubernetes workspace as well as CNCF workspace. We meet monthly for uh, community upon uh, communities and we meet weekly for to discuss any issues from contributors and uh, the feature request. All right, thank you everybody. I'm um, on Twitter, LinkedIn, Slack, anywhere. If you are interested, I'd be happy to connect. Thank you. Anyone have any questions?